tribal trails, tribal trails. The Son of God, He's near. He chose to walk with us. These tribal trails. Hi, and welcome to Tribal Trails. I'm glad that you can join us today. Today we're going to be learning about what the Bible says about marriage. How should a marriage function? Does marriage, according to the Bible, still apply to us today? Let's listen to Bill Jackson as he tells us what marriage is. Marriage is uh, actually a lifetime contract. In uh, marriage vows is that till death us do part. In other words, you and I, wife, you and I, it's until one of us die that this marriage contract is to survive. Now, the thinking today is, is such that that is not in the minds of, of people. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and shun evil. I get my ideas from God's word. I get what I have to say to you, the principles or the things that count from the book that actually it's what God says, not what society has approved or uh, disapproved or whatever. And so I look back and say, how do, how do work, uh, things work now? Or what are they like? And uh, I'm looking at, of course, being of the First Nations myself, and I'm looking at the reserves and communities I've been to. My ministry has been mainly among First Nations. And I guess that's where I would see most of the what's going on. So I, I think, <laughs> although it's not close to First Nations only, I believe that when the Word of God says something, it doesn't say, hey, hey, you over there, I got something special for you, and you, a different color over here, I got something different for you. I, I don't see that in the book. What God says to one, he says, he says to all. And uh, therefore, I believe that if we're going to go by the book, by God's word, um, it doesn't excuse us or gets us away from problems. However, it can get us to a place where we can solve those problems as we go. But there needs to be, first of all, I believe, in marriage, a true commitment one to the other. Now, sad, sad to say that the big thing that's, that's missing in, uh, in many marriages today is simply that not being committed to each other. Every day they pass me by I can see it in their eyes Empty people filled with care Headed On they go through private pain, living fear to fear. Laughter hides their silent cries, only tears of tears. At the 
What's happening these days, I, uh, in, to sum it up in one word, I think the idea of marriage has been, uh, what's the word, cheapened? Made not as important as uh, it should, uh, uh, as important as it is. There's something about it where people come together just for a little while and they're gone again. Sometimes they've come together and they've been together for some time. And by the time uh, maybe a baby comes along, and sometimes the father is nowhere to be found. Gone. Oh, yeah, we found him later, but he's with somebody else already. That's, that's not the way God meant it to be. And I, I think that uh, there's something wrong somewhere when those kind of things happen. If there's a boy and a girl come together and there's no commitment for, uh, say, that they're committed to, to each other solely for one another for the rest of the time, there is something missing, and it's certainly going to show up. As I said, I want to get my, uh, my stuff, my material, my, what I'm telling you. I want to say, hey, it's from the Word of God. You have this. In chapter 24 of Genesis, and I'm going to read to you, and I'd like you to read it, how important it was for them to, to, to know the importance of he took a wife. Then Isaac brought her into his mother Sarah's tent and he took Rebekah and she became his wife. That's Isaac. He, she became his wife. Now, that marriage, we see as we turn the pages, stuck. That is, it lasted. But the first part of that chapter is very important to know that it didn't happen by accident. These, this guy and this girl didn't just bump each other and, uh, <laughs> I love you, let's go to my place, or shall we go to your place and and uh, where shall we stay? Now, I mean, that's, I say that's cheapens marriage. Uh, I mean, it, it makes marriage almost like a, a mockery. There's no intention of taking this one, this man, this woman, till death us do part. A lot of it today is not love, it's lust. Lust is just fulfilling your desires and throwing the consequences, as it were, just wherever the chips may land. I'll do what I want to do, idea or attitude, and I'll, I'll do it my way. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes but he who heeds counsel is wise. Uh, whether you are a Christian or not, if anything is going to work, it'll have to be from the principles of the Word of God. You may exist together, but not the way God planned. And a lot of times, the, uh, the idea of marriage is... is uh, not taken in the right way, so there's consequences for that kind of thing. We are called to take your life to a world where wrong, wrong seems right. What could be too great a cause? Sharing life with
Whatever you're considering, whoever you're considering, does he, does she believe what you believe? The same God? The same book? I don't mean that a person say, well, yeah, he goes to church sometime. He promised he's going to come to church. No, don't take those promises seriously because it doesn't happen that way. Sad thing about one other case I might mention is that this couple, uh, this guy kept coming to church with this Christian. And he said, yeah, I'm going to follow this. I'm going, I, I, uh, I'll go to church. But the week after they were married, this actually happened. The first Sunday after they were married, he said to her, you and I are married, are married now. You can go to church if you want to, but don't expect me to go. Well, how do you think that marriage turned out? Make sure yours is going to turn out better. Is your marriage working out? Are there heartaches, disappointments, or maybe you feel like you want to give up on your marriage? Have you thought of why your marriage is failing? Maybe it's because you're not basing your marriage according to God's word. If you need prayer and encouragement, give us a call. God ordained marriage, and there is a better way. Let's continue listening to Bill. For us, of course, my wife and I, we prayed about it. I prayed. Not praying with her, but before I prayed that God would give me the right one. This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. Now, that's why I say it's good to know the Lord and good to know how to pray about matters. And so I, I look at this this way, that you take marriage as important, very, very important. To break a marriage is to break a promise that you made to God, and it has consequences. And so I say to you, uh, not to rush like you're trying to make a touchdown here, not to rush, take time, pray about it, make sure you have looked at matters carefully and you're depending on God. You don't just make it a girlfriend, boyfriend relationship. That's not sanctioned in Scripture. That's not approved of God. Don't make it that way because that won't last either. You see, with no commitment, it's this way, as it has turned out many times. Boy and girl meet, boy and girl get together, boy and girl stay together, and so on. Down the line, boy and girl separate. Boy and girl have a 
have a kid, who's going to keep him? Well, in many cases, grandparents turn out to be the ones who keep them, but that's not, that's not the way it should be. So we look at it here and say, no, it's not the kind, not, not the way we go at it. I believe that coming together as husband and wife, not boyfriend, girlfriend relationship. And especially if we're believers, we want to do what's right. So do the right thing. Do you want to do the right thing for your marriage? If you do, then you need Jesus to be in control of your life. You have to give your marriage to Him. When you do, it's possible that your marriage may be restored or renewed. The heaviness, the difficulties, the worry of life will be lifted up. Before Bill tells you how, first let's listen to Henry as he tells us how his marriage turned out when God's principles were applied. And I just wanted to share one of the reasons why I waited till, like, for God to. God had a special someone for me. Um, when I was growing up, after high school, all my three older siblings got married, and they married people that were really godly, and they had a strong marriage, and that was really encouraging for me uh, through my my early twenties, just to see their relationship and their starting young families. Um, just really desired to have that, a family that, that would follow the Lord. Um, just because that, that's how I was brought up and that's how I've, I've watched my, my siblings mm -hmm. in their marriages. And it's been encouraging um, to pray for my siblings, yeah. for their spouses. And they had always encouraged me to pray for a future spouse and to just be uh, faithful and that just to wait for the right time. Uh, so how did, how did you meet your wife? Um, when I met, met my wife, I had joined a, a team that went to Mexico to build houses. Um, Angela had a friend like we were both friends with the same person, uh, okay. a young a young lady, and she happened to invite Angela to come uh, on this Mexico trip, and she was with a totally different church group, and she de decided to come, and uh, one of my buddies and I had promised, like we're not going to go to Mexico, because we, we knew there was going to be other girls coming, and we weren't going to be be distracted and like um, mm -hmm. we were there to serve God and yeah. to uh, build houses for these people and um, when I came back from Mexico Angela started attending the same college and career mm -hmm. group that I went to and we just kind of slowly started talking to one another and she came watched me play hockey a couple nights and then I was singing at an open mic uh, in town here, and she, she came and watched me perform mm -hmm. there. And when we started dating, I actually, I think I wrote her a letter or something, and she wrote me one back the next. Mm -hmm. I was doing a night shift security mm -hmm. at a gas station, and she was up all night, all excited, and, and came and brought me this letter. And so I, I wanted to be honorable to her father, and I went to go meet him, and and her mom, mm -hmm. uh, just to ask permission to start a relationship and and just give the reason why mm -hmm. um, I wanted to start a relationship with her. And um, probably for six or seven years before I met Angela, I was I kept praying off and on for a spouse because mm -hmm. I I really desire to have a family and to have kids, but I, I just knew that God had the right timing and the right person and that I, I had to wait. And I, there are so many opportunities I had 
um, with girls that that uh, wanted they already had kids or whatever and they wanted me to be like to have a relationship with me but I I just kept saying like I like I it was kind of flattering but I knew I just would have to tell them straight out like I'm waiting for the right one and like I kind of told them like I want them to be a Christian and um, so I'm really glad and blessed that I had waited uh, to meet Angela and so at that time when you went to her, his, her parents, I mean, was that just to go out for a date? And when did you ask her to be your wife? I'd actually written a letter to Angela. I just kind of mentioned marriage and mm -hmm. would you ever think about getting married? And we'd only been dating for about six months, I guess, but I'd they both didn't really want to wait a full year mm -hmm. like to get married in the summer so we we actually got married in two days after after christmas mm -hmm. um well when i had actually asked her it was i think i asked her and then i went to her parents to get their blessing mother-in-law and father-in-law have been really encouraging spiritually they're very strong people and they they really love their family and they they're have really been blessed that Angela was brought up in such a christian. a really christian home uh, she went she attended Cedars Christian School and she had a, a really strong faith and that that has really encouraged me um, in our marriage um, really blessed and happy to be a father and so be a husband God answered your prayers, like yes. you had prayed for a wife and, and a family, and God answered your prayers. You know, and we'll go back to the time when you you were dating your your wife. Uh, what were some things that you did that you encouraged each other in the Lord? Uh, some of the things we did, we wanted to honor. I wanted to honor Angela's parents. Quite quite often, we go with other couples, like especially Angela's sister and and her fiance. We'd go out together and go on double dates, or uh, we'd just hang out with Angela's family. Or we we knew it was really challenging to, to kind of stay away from like just spending a lot of alone time where there was no one else around. So we, we'd always drive her home at a, a certain time, like nine or ten o'clock, and to pray for each other, pray for each other, and to pray together uh, regarding our relationship with one another. So how did you know that this was the right girl that God had chosen for you? I just kind of had this feeling right from the start, like when we first were dating, that that everything was just working out, and it was that this was the right one, that, that God had finally answered answered my prayers, um, and that I was ready, and that Angela was ready uh, for this relationship. Is there anything that you would like to share or challenge our viewers today? I just wanted to, to challenge um, a lot of the young people in the relationships um, that God has someone for that was meant to be your spouse. Um, to make sure that, that God is in the center of your relationship between you and your girlfriend or, or um, even just friends too. Like, I just wanted to encourage the young people um, while you're dating to make sure that you set your boundaries. It honors God when we, we stay pure uh, during your dating relationship because it, it's just so much more meaningful uh, to share with your future spouse, uh, to wait until you're married. Thank you, Henry, for sharing how you honored God in your marriage. Would you like to honor God right now in your marriage? It is never too late. You can start right now. Listen to Bill as he tells us how. For this time, say to God, Lord, I think I'm, uh, I'm understanding what's, what, what, this all, what this is all about. And I need you in my life. 
I've accepted you as Savior, but I need your strength for what I'm hearing and what I should be, what I should do. And you talk to God that way. And then you that has never accepted Christ in your life, if it's going to work, if marriage is going to work, you need Jesus in your life. Not just for that, but for salvation, forgiveness of sin, to, to uh, your soul to be saved so that it, you're not lost anymore, you're not going to go to a lost eternity, you will go to be with the Lord. You need to ask the Lord, Lord Jesus, I'm beginning to understand what it's about, and I, I've never accepted you before, but I want you to come into my life today. Right now, I need you. Save me. Forgive me of my sin. I believe you died for me. Your blood was shed for me. You did all that for me. Thank you for dying for me. And I accept you in, into my life right this moment. I trust that you'll make that decision, people, because I, I know that... Uh, Things can be better. Things can be up to where they should be. And God can bless your marriage. The teaching you've heard by Bill Jackson on marriage is available on four DVDs. There are 12 messages, six hours of biblical teaching on marriage. If you would like a copy, give us a call. I hope we walk the last mile together. Hand in hand. We can see the promised land We've been through a lot of bad times But our love, our love's forever And I hope we walk the last mile together Shine and we talked in stormy weather and I hope